Hey Smokers, Drago one here. Today we're going to be setting up a workflow for formatting and installing operating systems onto many different Mac minis um, and make that the most efficient process possible. Um, as you can see, I have a fuckload of Mac minis, including some broken ones there. Uh, probably about 20 Mac minis. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can figure out a system that ends up working out that we can just get OS installed, installed, installed without having to manually put the CD in for each individual one. So I have a plan, a process for that, and it is as follows. First, we're going to take our 10.6 installer drive right here on Firewire 400 and install 10.6 onto this floater drive. It'll be the source master for uh, transferring to every single Mac Mini over here. So basically we're just going to be copying um, the pre-installed environment on Floater Drive onto every single Mac Mini. Got it? I think that's simple enough. I, I have no idea. Okay, so right here we've booted um, the installer drive that is actually on screen at the bottom here. And right there I'm selecting the floater drive, and I'm going to reformat that. I was actually using that as the React OS drive there. So I'm going to try and name this, but uh, since I have the OS now booted in French mode, or the installer booted in French mode, uh, it actually set my keyboard region to Azerty. So that's fun. So I'm trying to like type that in right now. And uh, having a, some problems, you know, some problems. Uh, but of course, I figured it out, and we go ahead and erase the drive, uh, preparing it to install 10.6 again, just to go over it like a million times. We're installing 10.6 onto the floater drive, and the floater drive will be used as the source files for copying directly to every single Mac Mini using SuperDuper. It's not really that complicated, but I think I must be tired and like, I don't really understand the concept, yet I did it. I don't know. It's weird. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I'm done. And now I'm going to go ahead and select um, some settings here so that it'll not take up that much space. And then, uh, you know, here's the personalize here. And I'm going to go ahead and uncheck a bunch of stuff in here that will take up a lot of extra space we don't need. And I find out that if we, if you do have it in French mode, there actually isn't an English in there somewhere. Because I thought English was Anglais, but I can't actually see that. Maybe I'm stupid. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. So these are the final selections. And taking up probably about 8.39 gigaoctet of space. And we selected the drive for install, and we've started install, which is a very long and agonizing process. But still, since we're going from a mechanical hard disk to another mechanical hard disk, it's faster than going from an optical drive to a mechanical hard disk. So, we're now going to wait and uh, see what happens. The two blinking lights here reminds me of uh, Christmas time in uh, probably 1998 or 1999. There was some really cheesy LED Christmas lights that played little music, and this kind of reminds me of that. This shot establishes that the operating system has successfully been installed and is now booting from the floater. So here in the final setup, you see that they give some French-speaking regions to choose from, no other ones, and then here we have it will actually let you select your keyboard and set it to American, which is QWERTY, because Azerty is annoying when you're trying to use a QWERTY keyboard. So, um, And uh, we'll continue and not transfer any data. We just want a fresh install. Very important tip. You can always skip the registration from here, but uh, remember how to actually read French, and there you go. And then you can make your user account, and we're going to call it Floater, I think. Yep, there it is. Very good. Okay, so Floater has been created. Uh, we're now booted off of Floater right now, and uh, yeah, we're at the desktop. So this is the environment that's going to be transferred directly to every other 2006 Mac Mini. So let's go ahead and take a look at the setup now that we're going to use to 
do this transfer. So at first I wanted to actually use the 2009 Mac Mini to do the transfer since I already had all the software I needed to do everything, but uh, there was a slight problem with that. And that was simply because it did not have FireWire 400, which, you know, would have made things a lot easier. So I'm going to have to actually use a 2006 Mac Mini instead. Yes, use a 2006 Mini to transfer operating system environments into other 2006 Mac Minis. Drink every time I say 2006 Mac... No, please, you will die of alcohol poisoning. So to make things easier for me, I already have a 2006 Mac Mini with a 10.6 install on it. So I'm going to use that as, you know, the source machine, our, I guess, slave machine, shop machine, machine that's going to do all the dirty work. Basically, you're going to plug everything else into it, and then it's... It's gonna it's gonna be the machine that transfers everything using super duper. I my vocabulary tonight. It's gone, okay? It's gone. And I'm actually doing a terrible job narrating this. So like you're gonna have to forgive me. This is actually really awkward. I've never tried this before, so um right now I'm I'm plugging in uh, the floater drive right now and I don't have a proper USB adapter for IDE and I have to power it with a real PC power supply. So that's happening. Now I'm plugging in the Firewire 400 cable that's plugged into our Target Mac Mini. Uh, the data is going to go from the floater drive here to through the Mac Mini into the Firewire 400 cable into the Target Mac Mini. Good lord. I have no idea what I'm doing in this shot. Uh, oh yeah, I have to plug the monitor into my main working Mac Mini. Okay, that, that's pretty smart. Yeah, no. Oh, okay. Right, I got it! <laughs> Alright, so now we're finally ready! This is the most convoluted video I think I've ever made. Um. It looks, in this shot, like I'm booting off the Mac Mini I just pointed at, but I'm not. The Mac Mini I'm booting off of is actually behind the monitor to make things even more complicated for no reason. So, the one in the front that you're seeing in front of you, that Mac Mini, that's the target Mac Mini. As you can see, it's not actually powered on. So, you know, why would it be starting up? I don't know. Okay, so finally we're started up and I'm going to power on the target Mac Mini and hold down the T key on the keyboard I have connected. Yep, there's me holding the T key. And, uh, yeah, and so I'm a little disappointed that nothing ends up happening. Yep, I'm expecting the drive to show up there, and it just doesn't. So I think there's something wrong with the Mac Mini, so I swap it out and try another one, and it does the same thing. So, uh, what actually has to happen is when I formatted these, I didn't actually, uh, give them a file system or anything. I probably just repartitioned them. So I had to actually reformat them, as you can see here. And uh, then we can actually get started with the Super Duper transfer. So yeah, let me just go ahead and uh, download uh, Super Duper off a uh, Mac update. Oh wait, Safari sucks on 10.6. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, go to the original website, you know, or the actual developer. I mean, this website runs much better. It seems like it's designed for 10.6. All right, let's download the latest version. What could go wrong? You know, it's made for a lot of different operating systems. I'm sure it's totally fine. And, uh, uh, yeah, it's down. Oh, it's mounting. Oh, yeah. It's too new, and we can't launch it. <gasps> oh, so what are we going to do? Since the old version is no longer available, why don't we go ahead and go through the long process of taking it off the Mac Pro, because we know it has a 10.6 working version there, and plug it in. And I wasn't filming at the time, but this is what happens when I try to plug in my flash drive into the 2006 Mac Mini we were using. Wonderful. So I get the computer started up again, and I notice my drive didn't mount, so um, I check in disk utility and just look at the flash drive that's connected. And I don't do anything, I just click it, and I didn't even click mount. I didn't click it, it just appeared. Like, usually the button, like, grays itself out. So now, finally, I can transfer the Super Duper off. So I finally get Super Duper on the computer and eject the drive, and it takes like 500 years to do that. 
And then I try to launch Super Duper, and it doesn't frickin' work. I don't know why. I just sort of cry a little bit here and try to launch it again, as if it's going to make much of a difference. But, uh, so now I feel stuck again. What could have happened? Well, I don't know. Probably corrupted. So then I go back to the website, actually read shit, and find out that, oh, there is a version specifically for 10.6. And boom, there it is. And guess what? This one actually frickin' works. Yeah. So now it pops up a bunch of stuff for tutorial stuff that we don't need, and now we're actually ready to do the transfer. Yes, we finally made it. All we have to do is click on the source drive, which is the, the 106 on the left there that is the uh, floater drive, and then the secondary drive will be the Mac target, sorry, mini target, I can't freaking read it. So 106 to mini target, 106 is, fl is floater, mini target is our target machine, and the mini target could be any computer. We're actually going to do it twice in this video. Uh, I don't know when I'm going to start the, the uh, actual transfer here. Let's skip ahead of that. Oh, here we go. Let me go ahead and copy it. Here we go, and a secondary, are you sure, step. And now we're going to start copying the files. As you can see, it dismounted the target drive for a little bit. It's going to remount it. There it is. And yeah, so now this part takes like, I don't know, 40 minutes, an hour. I don't really know. It's a crap Mac Mini, so we'll see. Okay, so it's done. This is what the done screen looks like. Um, so we're going to unplug that and put that aside. And now we're going to grab uh, another Mac Mini to do another transfer. We're not even going to shut down our main machine. Here's the other Mac Mini. And uh, we're going to go ahead and plug, turn it on, target disk mode it, plug it in, and then... Uh, oh yeah, i got to format it. Of course, they're all blunt. Oh, crap. Now I need to try yet another Mac Mini because that one didn't work. Oh, yeah, probably more like user error. Okay, I swear I didn't remember this part, but it actually was user error. I forgot to plug in the keyboard for target disk mode. <laughs> so now I'm actually going back to the original second Mac Mini. So not that you could tell which one was which or anything. But now we're on the official second Mac Mini I showed. Or was it 4th? Or like 18th? There have been so many Mac Minis on screen. Well now it's there and it's formatting time. Let's go ahead and name it something. I can't read that. It's too far away. But it's probably good. Erase. Thank you. Oh my god. So let's go back to that same running instance of Super Duper. Now we're going to choose the exact same source, the floater, except now we're going to put it on whatever the hell that is. Um, it's the target mini, and boom, we're right at it again. So as you can see, I didn't even have to restart the computer at all, and we're now on the road to a second operating environment on a second Mac mini. It's, it's pretty efficient. It really is. That is, if you want to call efficient using 10.6 on 2006 Mac minis, yeah, look, it's done, and it took for frickin' ever. Now, this is the outro segment, and here, since most of the footage I recorded was mostly incomprehensible, and you couldn't really tell what was going on because it was too far zoomed in, and there were Mac Minis flying all over the place, right now I'm sort of going to give you an opportunity to see just what happened. So, the far left Mini... That's our working one, the one that did all the processing for transferring the data around. The A one in the center is the first one we copied from the floater to that one to make it bootable. And B is just the second one we did. And so here I'm sort of giving quote-unquote proof that I did that. It's kind of hard to show it because every single operating environment is looks exactly the same because it's all... Snow Leopard, it's all using the same wallpaper. The only thing you can tell apart is the fact that it's in French. So, yeah, that's that, I guess. Um, they all work going back and forth between monitors. Um, they're all on at the same time. This is arguably the most heat-efficient way to use your Mac Mini since the heat rises upwards. So they're kind of like little Mac Pro 2013s. Of course, you can't use the optical drive like this, but who the hell is using that anymore? I sure didn't use it for this installation. So the drive I'm showing on screen right now 
is the floater drive. Um, this disc was put onto these the A and the B, the middle and right machines. It's pretty much all I'm trying to show. Um, but this is just one operating system that we can use for one set of Mac Minis. There's still the G4 Mac Minis. There's still the 2009 Mac Minis. So for the G4 Mac Minis at least, I'm going to use this Mac Mini right here. This is the SD card a G4 from the 2014 video. Yeah. So I can put that in target disk mode and use it as my quote-unquote floater drive to be the source to transfer to all the other Mac Minis. So that's pretty useful, and it already has Halo and stuff installed. So I can have that on every single G4 Mac Mini I have. So that's pretty nice. So, yeah. So I hope some of you could enjoy my kind of new format of video. Uh, I started doing it because I had an audio problem. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Sorry I've been away for a little bit. Um, I sort of have nailed down a new way to do some editing, so... Hopefully it's a little bit more efficient, and I'm trying to figure out uh, how to use my new uh, camera. So, thanks everybody for sticking with me through this trying time. <laughs> See you later.